This next Devo is called The Good Shepherd. And it says in John 10, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, which we talked about him knowing our names, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. So our base chapter again is John 10 and we've been talking about all the voices around us. And in verse 14 that I just read, we're reminded that Jesus is the good shepherd and it's just like his Father knows Jesus and Jesus knows his Father. He reminds us again that he lays down his life for the sheep. We've now talked about the truth that Jesus' words bring life, not the words of a hired hand or a fellow wolf dressed up to look like a sheep, but rather the words of the Good Shepherd. And we're reminded that He knows us. Do you have a good relationship with your own father? Some of us can say yes and some of us can say no. Divorce often breaks a father-child relationship and it's never restored. Other fathers abandon or destroy, and disappointment affects our relationship with other fathers, and many fathers were just absent or didn't come through on promises and ruled us with a heavy hand or hurt us. But the fact that Jesus compares sheep to shepherd as his relationship to his father is worth noting here. Jesus is always pointing to his father, first and utmost, with his trust in all of the directives that his father gives him. One of those directives was to come to earth and lay down his life for a people that would abuse him and accuse him and ultimately hang him on the cross to die. So let's stop here a second. If our earthly father told us to walk across the street and give our life up for a neighbor, we'd place him in the category that we talked about before, a father to be disappointed in and afraid of. What father would ask his son to do such a thing? And yet Jesus is pointing to his Father and calling their relationship good. The only way to have this kind of relationship with Jesus is to completely trust in the fact that everything he calls us to do, every word he speaks in our lives, and every pond or pasture that he leads us to is good. Fathers that have broken trust with a child will not be able to get kids to follow their instructions. If a father hits a kid's mom, a child won't hear the voice of his father when he says to be kind to his brother. If a father breaks the law, a daughter won't listen to that father when he's teaching her safety behind the wheel. But here we are hearing the voice of Jesus say that he's a good shepherd, he knows our names, the number of hairs on our head, and all of our desires, and that we know him, his goodness, his mercy, his love, his discipline. And it says it's just like he and his father know each other. If we're supposed to run from hired hands, avoid wolf attacks, feel safe and secure, listen and obey, then we better know that the one we are choosing to listen to is trustworthy, offers words of life, and is a father like no other, the true definition of a father. Fathers here will fail us, as will, as will mothers, and will fail our own children. Fathers have to ask forgiveness to restore broken relationships, and often fathers act like hired hands or even wolves, so it's hard for children to know a voice that brings life. But here we have been reading on how to distinguish between all the voices we hear. We have to hang out with, read about, learn about, and follow the Good Shepherd to drink, rest, eat, and all the things as we lift our heads and look into His eyes and know His voice. I personally think this takes a lifetime. We hear the call of the shepherd to come near because he loves us and so we obey, but we walk among herds of sheep that are also hearing and listening, some right away and some after rescues from cliffs or danger. And our ears perk up along the way to listen to voices outside the pen, those trying to get in, those trying to destroy, and sometimes we entertain other voices much to our dismay. But there he stands, with rod and staff in hand, there he lays across the gate to protect us, and there he speaks words of life that we can hear. Educating ourselves to hear and recognize and eventually come to love the voice of the shepherd takes walking among the herd, bumping and falling, getting up and following, and soon loving the sheep the same as he does. He and his father, the perfect example of hearing a voice and following it. God, call, God called his son to lay down his life for those that rejected him. The perfect act of love has never been superseded since, nor even understood. But when we grasp that perfect love that sent a son to the cross for us, all of a sudden our ears are opened and we hear his voice above all others, the voice of the Good Shepherd. <laughs>